Welcome to this edition of Smith Fife Home Care's Ask the Expert series. I'm Allison Butler, Director of Business Development for Smith Life Home Care in Washington, DC. And I'm here today with my special guest, Mark Gottlieb. I will introduce him shortly. Uh, Smith Life Home Care's Ask the Expert series is committed to providing valuable information and resources to our community. So on that note, I would like to welcome Mark Gottlieb, independent insurance broker for Gottlieb Insurance Advisory, who offers valuable and honest advice about a range of insurance products. Mark, thank you for being here with us today. Thank Can you. you take, take a moment, just introduce yourself to us. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, Mark Gottlieb, I have my own insurance advisory company, Gottlieb Insurance Advisory. So I try to provide advice as well as products. I offer a full range of products and for each product line, for instance, for long-term care, I'm mm -hmm. contracted with most of the carriers that offer these products so that I'm able to educate people about a wide range of products and, and help them to make the best choices. Okay. So that's, that's uh, you know, a little about me. I got into the business after a career in healthcare administration, including working with a senior living community as an administrator. Mm -hmm. and also working with a large uh, developer of assisted living communities. So I know wow. the industry on that side of the equation as well. Wow, that sounds good. I mean, yeah, that thanks. gives you a lot, of, um, a lot of experience with the, like you said, the senior living population and what their needs may be. Absolutely. And that's why I entered the field to try to provide education to individuals and families who needed to plan for the future relative to potential long-term care needs. All right, very good. Thanks. So we have some questions for you um, that will that can help our population or our viewers um, better understand long-term care insurance, okay? So the first question we have is, can you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about your role um, and how you can help with the long-term care insurance? Right. Well, again, my role is, is an independent educator and broker. So I both help educate and advise as well as I can assist people in obtaining different types of coverage. No fees in doing any of this. So that's a very positive aspect for mm -hmm. people. They will not have to pay me anything for my expertise and advice. And mm -hmm. if I can help them to find the right product, that's a great idea. Uh, and a great thing to be able to do. And that's why that's I entered the field to help people. So, Absolutely. you know, as an independent agent, I advise, I educate, and I provide information and assist people to obtain coverage if they would so like to do. Okay. So help us understand what is long-term care insurance and, and why is it important to have that plan? Okay, well, those kind of two questions. So I'll mm -hmm. start with I'll start with what is long term care in general, and then long term care insurance more specifically. Okay. Long term care is, can also be uh, called extended care. So it's a period of time where people are going to need assistance. Uh, the two main components that are addressed in long term care have to do with either physical needs such as the need for assistance with activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, grooming, helping with continence, supplies, and, and needs, et cetera. There are a number of other activities of daily living as well. So anyone who might have a chronic condition or illness, or in some cases, just as a result of frailty, uh, you would need some, some help and long-term care insurance can help with that. It also applies and very much so to the issues of have someone having dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the cases in which the care is provided is due to people who do have dementia and they need assistance in navigating their world, so to speak. Okay. So long-term care insurance can relate to being able to have some, a company pay for either home care, such as through Smith, mm -hmm. uh, adult daycare, 
assisted mm-hmm. living, which is becoming more well known as the number of assisted living communities crop up, right. or or full nursing home. Now, a lot of the people who will try to buy a long-term care policy will do so because they don't want to have to go to a nursing home. That's mm-hmm. the, the place of last resort. So some right. people still haven't understood that a long-term care policy doesn't mean it's there to help you pay for, for a nursing home. Mm-hmm. What it's there for is hopefully to keep you from having to go to the nursing home. And certainly being in the home is, is the most popular alternative. Mm-hmm. And assisted living is becoming increasingly popular as well. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit about long-term care. If you'd like, I can flow right into why long-term care coverage yes. is important. Absolutely. And, and you know, what, one of the big issues that people say is, well, you know, my spouse will help me when the time comes. I don't need mm-hmm. to worry about it. Or I have some adult children. Uh, you know, they live in the next county over. And so, you know, they, they, they promise me, you know, when the time comes, they'll be here to help me at any time. Well, the problem is people don't really understand the extent of, of the need for care. Right. Well, the need is widespread. Statistics will tell you that up to 76% of people will need some long-term care assistance at some point in their lives. Right hopefully later rather than sooner. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the extent, how long you're gonna need the care is kind of up in the air. Some people, short term, six months to a year. Some Mm -hmm. people could need care for up to 10 years if they have Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, neurologic conditions, post-stroke, and Mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. So people don't really recognize it, but when the time comes, uh, you know, you need assistance. Now you, you say, you know, I'll rely on my spouse. Well, is your spouse really going to be able to provide that care? They're mm-hmm. aging along with you. They may have their own health care issues. Mm-hmm. So it's not that simple. Yeah. Uh, with, with adult children, they have a lot of other responsibilities. You live in a metropolitan area. You're talking about an adult daughter coming from Arlington over to Rockville, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Not an easy task, especially when the adult child may be working. Mm -hmm. The adult child may have a teenager in the household that they're providing a lot of assistance to, may have a spouse or a partner of their own who who needs some assistance. It's not not easy for, and last but not least, may be working for a living. Right. If you look at right. all the statistics, there, there's a tremendous challenge in the workplace right now with employers who are mm-hmm. you know, lo- losing a lot of time to absenteeism and non-productivity because of the fact that the adult child who's working is mm-hmm. trying to juggle these demands. Yes. So if you have a long-term care policy that helps you to pay for a caregiver mm-hmm. from from someone like from your agency, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tremendous blessing. You know, whoever Mm -hmm. I find who ended up buying a policy and is using it is going, boy, I'm really glad I made the decision to have some long-term care insurance. Uh, You know, you're talking about adult children, they, you know, you're lucky if they live in Arlington or Alexandria. Some adult Mm -hmm. children are living in Kansas City, Missouri and Chicago, Mm -hmm. Illinois and Los Angeles, and they're not going to be around to help. So uh, you're you're kind of on your own. Yeah. uh, That respect. Uh, So you can also use long-term care insurance to protect assets because Mm -hmm. you have a certain amount of money. Well, you were, you were hoping to, you know, first of all, that money may be needed for a spouse again or partner, or you were hoping to protect some of that money to pass on to children and grandchildren. Right. So if you have a long-term care insurance policy, at least up to the point that you exhaust whatever amount of money you've bought in that policy, mm-hmm. that will go to pay and the assets will remain intact. So that's a very good reason some people yeah. really hope to protect assets. You certainly, for those who may not have a great deal of assets, a long-term care insurance policy allows them to afford to have the type of care they want. Mm -hmm. In this society, it's almost a luxury to be able to call 
uh, you know, Smith Life and say, send me, you know, a, a, an aid because yes. the costs are not insignificant over right. the course of time, to be sure. Absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, the, the other thing is simply, you know, it, it's part of the retirement issue. When you're thinking mm -hmm. about how much money do I have in retirement, you may think you have enough to plan to meet your overhead needs and to take an occasional trip, mm -hmm. et cetera. But, uh, you know, once you start running into those retirement funds to have to pay for long-term care yeah. and put a significant damper on, on your economies, on your plans. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit about why long-term care insurance is so important. That's a lot of good information. Thank you. I hope it wasn't too long, but it's important it's for people to understand you know, what some of these issues are in terms of making that decision. Absolutely. So, so then it sounds like it's not just one type of long-term care insurance or, or plan. It's, it's, it's several different types. Well, you, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you mentioned that because not enough people yet understand that there are now a lot more choices in the field. Mm -hmm. the, the up to about five years ago, uh, long-term care insurance basically meant traditional long-term care insurance. So okay. we bought some funds. There's a number of factors which go into choosing, you know, how to, how to design a policy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the two big issues were premiums can increase. Traditional mm -hmm. long-term care premiums can increase. You get that question all the time. People had their policy a number of years. The companies are now writing them a letter and saying, as of two or three months from now, your premium is going to be going up mm -hmm. you know, 10, 15, 20 percent. Mm -hmm. so you have to understand, you know, they, they didn't quite, uh, you know, design the plans according to what the, the data was or what the mm -hmm. needs were. The needs mm -hmm. are growing, the population's aging, more people are making claims on their policies. So to keep that long-term care pool of money in a congregate way sound, they have to reach out to, to the people who have long-term care policies and say, you kind of need to chip in to keep this whole. And of mm -hmm. course, for people who haven't had policies, their prices have increased. So yeah. if you bought a policy five years ago, five years later, well, not only because you're five years older in terms yeah. of age, but the policies have increased in cost. Yeah. Uh, so in any case, premiums increasing is a big problem. And then the biggest objection to traditional long-term care is what we call use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. so I myself have a traditional policy I'm paying several thousand dollars a year. Let's just round it out. Uh, let's say I've paid in for a number of years. I'm hoping I'm going to be paying in for a lot longer. I'm hoping mm -hmm. I don't just have to start using my policy. We all try to want to remain independent and healthy as long as possible. Absolutely. And let's just say perhaps something happens to me. And before I even need to use long-term care, I pass. And so all of those premiums went into the big pool to help mm -hmm. pay for everyone. But a lot of people will have the objection that, you mean, I'm not going to get anything back. My significant other, my family's not going to get any of that money back. And the answer is no, because mm -hmm. it's like health insurance. We right. pay premiums for health insurance. We pray we don't have any expensive health insurance costs, yeah. uh, but on the other hand, our next door neighbor may be getting open heart surgery or, mm -hmm. you know, in a big accident and the insurance companies are taking that pool of money to cover those. Yeah. So that's how insurance operates. But nonetheless, people don't like to use it or lose it. So in yeah. order to address those two biggest objections, the insurance industry started broadening into the whole arena of hybrid long-term care policies. By hybrid, it means it has several uses. The most popular is a life insurance combined with long-term care insurance. Wow, okay. The beauty of that is if you don't 
end up needing the long-term care insurance? The answer is yes, your loved one, your beneficiaries will get money back in the form of a life insurance policy. Wow. That is becoming a more popular approach to trying to buy long-term care insurance. Now, it depends on your particular situation, your age, mm -hmm. et cetera. But that, that is a very good choice. And a lot of people are now exploring hybrid life and long-term care options. There's also an option that combines an annuity with a long-term care rider. So you can reposition some money. Let's say you have some money you, you were gifted mm -hmm. you in a 401k or an IRA, you can reposition that into a long-term care product in a tax advantaged manner. And then mm. buy some additional, an additional pool of long-term care. So if that money runs out, you have that additional pool. And those prices for the additional pool are much more reasonable than the mm. traditional long-term care policies. But one other thing I will caution, and this is very important, and I tell everyone, you know, I always want to get this across. A lot of agents are selling life insurance policies with what's called chronic illness riders. A lot mm -hmm. of long life insurance policies have chronic illness riders, and it can be very helpful. But it's okay. not the same thing as a long-term care rider. So the money comes out of them differently. You might not get the full value. So okay. a true long-term care rider is a much more sound approach. Mm -hmm. For younger people who are going to build up, you know, life insurance cash value over time. And then even if some portion of that could be used as a chronic illness rider, it mm -hmm. certainly is a good alternative. But okay. people need to be aware of that. Yeah. Chronic illness rider is different than a long-term care insurance rider. So I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get into too much more complexity. But That's good. Yeah. Thanks for that tip. Yes, very important for people to understand that. Okay, so when should someone start um, considering signing up for a long-term care insurance policy? What's, what is too young? Is there such thing as too young? You know, there, there really almost isn't, but some people will certainly think so. I mm -hmm. mean, be, before you get to age 40 or 45, you don't even start thinking about the next stage of life. Right. Unless you're a 35-year-old with a 65-year-old parent who all of a sudden needs care and you're going, right. oh my God, this actually exists. This is yeah. for real. But typically people in their 40s, it used to be in their 50s or even mm -hmm. beyond. But given the escalating prices of a long-term care policy, mm -hmm. the sooner you lock it in, the better, especially with these hybrids where you have more time, you know, maybe yeah. to build cash value. Uh, the other thing is we never know what's going to happen to us in life. Yeah. I mean, we all go along thinking nothing will happen to us. Certainly the statistics are the greater level of long-term care cases and claims are being made as people age. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a number of people, for instance, I know you hear about multiple sclerosis, you know, more prevalent yeah. in females, appears in your 40s. Once you have a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and a lot of other types of conditions, you can no longer get a long-term care policy. Wow. Doesn't, doesn't mean that you're going to need care for mm -hmm. a number of years, you know. But it means eventually you will need some care, yeah. but the insurance company will say, no, that is a condition we won't touch. And there are a number of those, of course. So, so there's onset of illness yeah. when things happen to people. So if you've got your coverage locked in, they can't take it away. They you can't know, take you it away. You don't have okay. to worry about, will I qualify at a, at a later time? So there are certainly good reasons to look into long-term care insurance in some form as an mm -hmm. option at younger ages. That makes sense. That makes it, sense. It really does. So is there anything else that we need to know about long-term care insurance? Well, anything else to know? I, again, I think it's an important part of a retirement financial plan. Mm -hmm. I think people should know it can help 
to to cover you know some of the severe costs. A lot of people are really surprised when they learn about the expense mm-hmm. of a long term care episode. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, you know, very significant. The other thing is a lot of people could have something happen to them at younger ages. Mm-hmm. They might be able to use some of the money from that policy to help to get some assistance, for instance, you know, from your organization. Mm-hmm. And then there's still a pot left in for later. So a lot of early yeah. onset, let's say you have some form of cancer, you have some kind of an accident. And, and there are certainly a lot of issues that can crop up where maybe for six months, a year, two years even, mm-hmm. you need some assistance. You can reach into that pot of money, use it to pay for some of that care, still have some left over, which will even continue to grow if you buy the policy with what's called an inflation rider. Okay. Okay, so you price your policies based on your age, on your health status, the amount of coverage is the other thing people need to understand is that you don't, can't just say, I bought long-term care, I have long-term care. Well, what does that really mean? Did you mm-hmm. buy a policy that would cover you for two years at $100 a day of coverage? Or did you buy it for five years at $200 a day? So it's a variable a la carte type of arrangement. Mm-hmm. So, people so the cost different. could vary, sounds like. The, the cost, the cost could... vary tremendously by age and by the amount of coverage. So if you're a 45-year-old buying two years of coverage at $100 mm-hmm. a day versus a 65-year-old who's buying $200 a day. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you have to go through the pricing uh, game, so to speak, and, yeah. and see where's there a happy point. A lot of people in the past I speak with and say, you know, would you like to discuss long-term care insurance? It's really important. And they say, well, you know, at some point I approached the subject and an agent told me some enormous dollar amount that it was going to cost in premium. And it was out of my price range, or I just found that to be objectionable. Well, mm-hmm. if you load it up with every rider, and with the max amount and with the highest amount of inflation, which means mm-hmm. you know, the, the amount you have in your pool will grow more rapidly. But the issue is, what can I afford? Exactly. We as consumers have to understand, we have to base a lot of our decisions on what we can afford. Mm-hmm. So if someone talk, gave you an estimate that was added to ballpark, you say, never mind, I don't exactly. want long-term care insurance. Well, perhaps it should be back down to a lesser amount. Whatever you have Mm -hmm. is an amount you will have to help you when the time comes. It may not be as much as you want, but it will be more than what you have if you just turn and walk away because you think it's too expensive. Exactly. I think think that's a misconception. You know, a lot of people will just make the comment, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. But... You know, insurance is a valuable uh, product to have. And again, you have to price it right. I mean, we go out and look at homes. Wow, I love that home. Uh, I'd love to live in that. What's what's the price on that? Mm-hmm. Can't afford it. Well, you don't just say, okay, I guess I can't afford a home. <laughs> right. in the neighborhood, you scale down, you know, the, mm-hmm. the size of the house. Yeah. And then, say, okay, this is what I can afford. This is what I'm comfortable with. Absolutely. You know, really that's how purchasing decisions should be made when it comes to insurance as well. So that's, that's pretty much, I think we've covered a lot of territory here. Yeah. And uh, always delighted to assist anyone with any questions. There's no fees no obligations, you know, whoever has any questions. I have uh, just a tremendous amount of, of research and literature uh, that I can share with people. You know, I'm kind of a student of the long-term care game, so to speak. Yes, and yes. I like to share that information with people uh, as needed. So i delighted to assist in any way possible. Thank you, Mark. This has been, I've learned so much. And so we just want to thank you for joining us today and and sharing this information with us. We are extremely grateful. Appreciate the opportunity. Again, you know, I'm around for people who have questions by email, by phone. I am a licensed 
in Maryland, the District of Columbia, and Virginia. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm offering, you know, multiple products. So there's never just, here's the product for you, or yeah. here's exactly how it should be designed. One needs to design again. And then you can do a comparative analysis of these three different companies that offer this to see what mm-hmm. might fit best for people. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you. Very kind of you. Appreciate the opportunity. Folks, thanks for tuning in today to this edition of Ask the Expert. I'm Allison Butler. Have a wonderful day.